Hey guys and welcome back. I am Sam Crack and today I want to tell you about the waterline scam. Now if you have an interesting auction story, an interesting car, it could have come from the auctions or maybe it didn't, maybe you have a question about one of the cars at the auction, please send me an email at samcrackauto at gmail.com. Well I have seen this scam before, a viewer by the name of Jose emailed me in this 2015 BMW 228i on the Copart auctions. He was wondering if it would be a good car for him to bid or not since this is the sort of car he's been looking for. If you know the way I look at the auctions, the first thing I tend to do is see who it's for sale by. In this case, it doesn't tell you who it's for sale by, which likely means it's a dealer, wholesaler, or some other third party that's not the insurance company. So that always warrants a really close look at all the photos and all the details. While this car may be a flood car, you never know it by looking at the photos. It looks nice and clean. It says it's a run and drive. All the instrumentation on the dashboard seems to work just fine. And it doesn't look like there's any water in the interior whatsoever. But that brings up a lot of questions. A car that was likely deemed a total loss looks this good. Now, in my opinion, this photo is the best of the bunch. We don't see a lot of the car in this photo, but what we do see is the bottom of the fender and the words written in some sort of marker, WL, which stands for waterline. What they're telling us is that even though this was a flood car, the water line only came up to here. Now we've pulled up the listing. The first thing that always hits me when I pull up a listing is of course the photo. And in this first photo, there's something that already raises a red flag. But let's go ahead, look at the lot details. We'll get back to the photos in just a moment. First thing is that it's a salvage certificate for water or flood damage. And it has 23,000 miles, it's actual. It's a run and a drive, which is important. And for the damages, we know that the primary damage is water or flood, and the secondary damage is mechanical. Now, let's keep that in mind. It's got mechanical damage. That could mean absolutely anything. And it does say it runs and it drives, but runs and drives doesn't mean you're going to be able to take it from the North Carolina Copart and drive it to your home in California. That simply means the car moves a little bit. Uh, under its own power. It could have moved last month if this car's been at Copart for a little while, or it could have moved, you know, last week if they just got it in. So now that we've done all that, let's go through the photos. So in this first photo here, we see, I call it the tow hook, and basically these hooks come in pretty much all German cars that I've seen, likely a lot of regular cars too. There's a little hole in each bumper, and you can pop that little plastic piece out of the hole, and then screw, that piece screws in, and it's directly connected to your frame so that they can tow the car. So in the case of this car, likely it was in water that it needed to be pulled out of or it was left inoperable after being flooded and then it had to be pulled out. And that's why this water line is so strange. So we'll go ahead and look through the rest of the photos. And the car really does look nice and clean in all these photos. It looks really, really nice and clean. And, uh, oh, here's, here's the next photo that raised the red flag, in my opinion. We look at the engine bay. It looks fairly clean. Uh, it does look like it might have a little bit of dirt, but that's normal. And I actually like to see a little bit of dirt in the engine bay. If you ever see an engine bay that looks like it's all cleaned and armor all greased up, you know, that means somebody got to it before it went for sale. These cars don't sit at auction typically and look perfect. They They sit out in the elements. They're sometimes a little bit dirty, stuff that we can clean up in our own driveways, but you want to see a little bit of dirt. What stands out to me here is that this front piece, this is the air intake box, and there's an air filter sitting over here, strangely just in the engine bay. Now at first I thought, well maybe that's where it goes and there's a cover that's missing over it. No, it goes here. If you see there's little metal clips that unclip this piece and basically it lifts up, you put that air filter in, and not to mention that air filter to me looks brand new. Again, I won't know exactly until I go and look at it at the auction, but it looks brand new. A lot of times when these cars suck water in through the air intake, it makes the original intake completely soggy. It destroys it. You need a new one. If the car is still operating when this is all done, you need a new air filter. So. This is strange. It looks like someone pulled it out and threw it in there. I'm not sure why, but it's a huge red flag. If we go and we look at a 2015 BMW 228i engine bay on Google, we'll go to the images, and here's a 228i engine bay. And we look, 
and we see all, it looks similar to what we're looking at on the, the site, but you can see right here, uh, I believe that this would be some sort of oil cooler. There's no, uh, there's no air filter right here at all. It obviously belongs under here, which somebody pulled out, discarded for whatever reason, whether it was somebody inspecting the car. It just is, it throws a huge question in my mind. So we go on 23,000 miles, and here's the photo that I originally talked about and the whole reason I made this video. The water line, WL stands for water line, somebody wrote, only came up to the bottom of the fender. Now, if we look, that will be high enough to make its way into the cabin a little bit. But if you saw the videos on my Jetta, water making itself into the cabin that low. Now, again, my Jetta, the water was actually coming from up top into the car, funneling down into the floor. Well, this, a flood usually comes from the ground up. Well, water gets on the floorboards and it can damage the carpets and things like that. Uh, it's typically not detrimental to any of the mechanics. And I say typically, sure. It could uh, hurt something electronically, a lot of electronics in the cabin. If the water sits for a while, you start to have corrosion issues, things of that nature. But we're talking about a car where the water line says it's only to the bottom of the fender. And that's very strange. One other thing that uh, we'll mention before we look and compare it to another car, look at the interior. The seats look really nice. Uh, the carpeting looks fairly clean. And that is a big red flag. If water got into the interior, stuff just wouldn't look like this. Water that gets in and sits starts to create mold, starts to damage things. It's a lot tougher to fix when the water's been sitting. Now, we're going to compare this to a 2017 Mercedes-Benz CLA 250. And this car is for sale by Farmers Insurance. So we know it's for sale by the insurance company. I wanted to provide a flood car for sale by the insurance company. Now, I have seen insurance companies draw a water line. On this specific car, there's not. But I'm going to show you the big difference. When a car is in a flood, that flood water actually contains like grit and dirt. And that grit and dirt would leave a water line. Now, the flip side, white cars, it's tough to see blemishes in photos. It's like when people say, my car looks good from five feet away. White cars are always more difficult to tell, but I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Basically, we're going to go through the photos of this car. Again, flood damaged cars always look really nice. This one's also a run and drive. And when we get to the interior, if you look, you see everything looks a little damp. The dashboard looks a little bit damp. The seats definitely look a little bit damp. What happens is all that moisture sitting there closed in the door. So besides the car turning into a Petri dish, uh, it's just it's, the moisture is trying to escape and it's sealed in there. Look at the rear seats, damp. The back of the seats look damp. The insurance company doesn't usually have the time to clean these things up and send them to auction. This engine bay, you can see it's nice and dirty under there. This car was in a flood, wasn't touched, sent to auction. That's a car, even though it's going to bring a lot of problems, I'd be more willing to deal with because I don't know what might be hidden on it. Now look at this wheel. This wheel tells a story. And if you look at the gray area in the wheel, you see a lot of spots. Those spots were exactly what I was talking about. That's the dirt that was in the flood. It's stuck to the wheel. Since it's a dark area, we can see it better in the photos. Now, likely this car, the flood got very high in it. And again, this car also said it had mechanical damage. So now you got an idea of two cars at auction. We got our BMW 228i, and we've got our Mercedes CLA for sale by the insurance company. Both of them run and drives, both of them relatively new cars, both of them flood damaged. But the BMW has this waterline mark with mechanical damage that doesn't equate to a waterline mark drawn there. So if we take a look under the engine bay of my Audi S3, first thing let's notice it's nice and dirty. I haven't cleaned this one up yet, but that's okay. At an auction you want to see a little bit of that dirt. You don't ever want to see anybody cleaning anything up like we already stated. Now here's our air intake box on the BMW. It's over here, but it's still at around the same level. When Copart lists part of the damage being mechanical, and seeing that air filter just thrown into the engine bay like that, the first thing I think is that there's a problem with the air intake. Now what happens in a flood car, see right here in the grill, the air comes through here, and then there's a duct right here. It sucks it up into the air intake, which goes through the tube here, right into your engine. Well, instead of sucking in air, 
what it does is it sucks in water. Anytime you suck water directly into the engine like that, water and engines don't do well together. At the very minimum, you're gonna have some problem. You're gonna have to go drop the oil, drain everything, and see if you can bring it back to life. But in a lot of cases, what happens is something called hydro lock, and that's where water gets in and just completely destroys the entire engine. So here's the air intake box. Let's look at the air intake box in relation to the front of the car. Here's the front of the car. Okay, now let's go around and let's draw our imaginary waterline mark right here. You're telling me that there should be a problem with the air intake all the way up there with a waterline that only came here? I don't think so. So while some of these photos portray this BMW in a really nice fashion, if we take a closer look, we can tell there's more to the story. Likely, the fact that the listing shows the secondary damage as mechanical, the tow hook in the front bumper, and that air filter just sitting there in the engine bay tells us water definitely got higher than where somebody drew that line. My response to the viewer on this was, no way, Jose. Now maybe you think something different. Maybe you saw something in the photos I didn't. And if you did, please drop me a comment in the comments section below. If you see something abnormal in the photos, it's generally a good idea to either go check the car out in person or just pass on it entirely. If you liked hearing about the waterline skim, be sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you very soon.